G'day everybody, welcome back to the third part of our breakout tutorial in Construct 2. If you happen to miss the first two videos or one of them, they're down in the description, so follow that and come and join us soon. But if you're ready to go, we're going to just be doing primarily a lot of event sheet coding for this one. So the first thing I'd like to set up is just setting up the ball and the way it's going to behave. Now we're not going to use physics once again because we're not going to use the gravity to pull the ball down otherwise we're going to get a lot more speed going downwards than we are going upwards so we're actually going to do the first thing we're going to do is turn off gravity we're going to wait one second and then we're going to shoot the ball straight down towards that paddle okay so if you click on event sheet one at the top you can come and join me right now the event is going to be at the start of the game so at the start of layout you always find this under system and i'm just going to type in start and then on start of layout, click done, and you've got your event. Now the actions are exactly what I just said. Stop, stop gravity, wait a second, shoot the ball. So let's click add action, let's go to the ball, and let's turn off some gravity. Go ball, go gravity, and you type in zero. And that means no pulling the ball downwards. Wait one second. Now the wait function is under system. So let's go into system, let's type in wait. Okay, and it's the first one that you want. Wait a number of seconds before running the next action. So you wait one second, and then we're going to shoot the ball downwards with the physics. So let's go apply force at angle. Okay, next. The force we're going to use is 125. That seems to work pretty well for me. You can up it if you want. And the angle, you have to remember that zero degrees is to the right, and then we go down at 90 degrees so downwards would be 90 left would be 180 up would be 270 let's go okay and that's it that's all it's going to do if i start the game now click play the paddle's just going to sit there i can't control it unfortunately give it a second to load and the ball boom, will shoot down and it's going to bounce around and off <laughs> anyway that's pretty much it for the moment so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to have it so if the ball leaves the bottom, just like you saw then, so if it goes outside the layout, we destroy the ball, we put it back in the middle of the layout, and then we do the wait a second and shoot it back down again. So we're basically going to do this again when the ball leaves the layout. So we're going to add an event, and the event is going to be in system again. No, sorry, scratch that. It's not in system, it's in ball, because oh, I'm an idiot. And there is one called is outside layout. So if the ball is outside the layout, then we destroy it. So ball destroy. We create a new one, smack bang in the middle. So create object. Now, what object do we want to create? I went very quickly and sorry. That's the action we want to use, create object. What do we want to create? We want to create a ball on layer. Don't worry about the layer, but where do we create it? Firstly, the X is 400 because that's going to be in the middle. How high it is, I'll have to check, but I'm going to guess about 432 four, two is what I have written down. Okay, let me just double check that Y value. So I'll go to level one, click on the ball. No, I was close. 416. 416. Just like so. We're then going to do these two again. So I'm actually going to click, control click. I'm going to copy these bad boys, copy here, and paste them just there. So create the ball, wait a second, shoot it downwards. So it's just basically going to restart the ball in the middle. All right, next thing we have to pro, well, let's actually just test that before I do it anymore. So one second, boom, should bounce off. One second, boom, and it's just going to keep going like that forever. Next thing is we need to get these balls, these bricks, to destroy when the ball hits them. And that's really simple. The event is that the ball collides with another object and that object isn't just the blocks or the block blue block green block orange it is blocks okay go done and it's when the ball collides with any of the blocks that are in that family what are we going to do we're going to destroy the blocks so you go to blocks destroy and that's it and now it's not going to destroy every block all in one go construct is smart enough to know that when the ball collides with a specific block only destroy that one block. That's how you code it. All right. If I didn't have this on collision with blocks, it probably would destroy every block. Okay. But because we've collided with one, it knows which block to destroy. So run layer. Hope he does his thing. And there it is. 
Let's see if he destroys the second one. Off he goes. Okay. So that there is done. The last thing is really, we want to be able to finish the level. Because right now, they're going to destroy all the blocks. We can do that easily. But then, when we get to the end of the level and there's no blocks left, it's just going to be a ball bouncing around an empty level. So what we're going to do is we're going to check if there are any blocks left. If there aren't, then we're going to go to the next layer. All right, so we only have one level, I know that, but we're going to change that in the future. The first thing we're going to do is add an event, and we have to go to System this time around. So I want you to click on System, go Next, okay, and the one that we're going to use for all of this is Compare Two Values, okay? So what that means is that we're going to compare how many blocks there are in the level to the number zero. And I hope that makes sense. So what we're doing is there's two values that it wants. The first one's going to be blocks.count. All right, and this property here it tells you how many exist on the layout currently. Okay, so if the number of blocks is equal to zero, then there are no blocks left. That's exactly what that means. If you unfortunately don't have a family, like if you can't use your family uh, groups, you have to check each block individually. All right, and I'll show you quickly what that looks like. Okay, I would go block blue count equals zero okay and i'm actually going to copy that and paste it in the same thing so you can see i've now got two conditions inside my event i would then edit the second one and change that to blue green and then so forth okay you just add in all the different colors that are going to be in your game let me get rid of that i need to edit that back to blocks and this is why we use families, because families are just so fantastic. And if you're not using families, obviously you have to do this event for each color. So when the ball collides with blue, destroy. When the ball collides with green, destroy. All right, I'm going to move on. The action is when the counts, the number of blocks there are are zero, we're going to load the next level. So we're going to go to action, and we're going to go to system again. And we're going to go, go to layout, this one here. Now, I know we don't have any more than just level one, so what's actually going to happen is it's going to reload level one, and it's going to be fresh, and all the blocks are going to be back. We are going to add in the second level in a moment, but let's just test this out and make sure it still works. The other thing we have to do is obviously code in the panel. So let's code Mr. Panel. All right, click Add Event, okay? And what we're going to do is we want to move the panel all the time. So under System... There's an event called every tick. Okay, so every second, all the time. Okay, the action is we want to move the paddle to the position of the mouse cursor. And it's pretty easy how to do. Add action, paddle, and then just type in position, and you'll see there is a set position action. The X position is left and right. How far across the screen left and right you want. Because we want to track the mouse, the value is going to be mouse dot x not absolute just dot x the y value however we don't want to follow the mouse dot y because then the paddle is going to be able to go up and down and move all around the screen we are going to keep the y position at whatever the paddle currently is so the y stays at the exact same position press play and you can see no matter how high my mouse goes the paddle just follows it left and right Brook. Dink. Anyway, I'm not going to play the game in front of you. You can do that. That's it done. That's the coding almost 100% complete. The last thing we have to do is focus on getting the second level and adding all that stuff in. And I'm going to leave that until the next video, okay? Because I want you to just focus on what you're doing now. So I'll see you in the next video, everybody. We're going to clean this up and I'm going to set you some challenges. So you'll see you in a moment.